Everybody, my name is Ryan Stevick, and I am a AWS Solutions Architect. Um, so today I am going to talk to you about running Kubernetes on AWS and really what makes Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, uh, EKS, the most trusted way to run Kubernetes. Um, so for this session, I'm going to go ahead, based on some of the previous discussions and presentations, that everybody has a pretty good starting foundational understanding of containers and container orchestration. So I'm just going to jump right into the value that Amazon EKS can really provide to everybody. So Kubernetes popularity has really continued to grow over the years as it's really been able to demonstrate its ability to simplify the deployment and management of containerized applications at scale. Um, Kubernetes allows you to configure and run those containerized applications at production scale and integrates those flexible plugins to allow you to easily configure things such as network and storage for your application and its different requirements. Uh, development teams generally choose Kubernetes for its vibrant ecosystem and its broad community, those consistent open source APIs it provides, and this broad flexibility for a lot of different use cases um, for your application container needs. But as many of us have talked about today, um, to be honest, managing Kubernetes at scale is and can be hard. Um, running containers and clusters of Kubernetes nodes at production scale is complicated and really requires trained resources who do spend a significant portion of their time managing things like upgrades, uh, monitoring and scaling the control plane, deploying and managing the life cycle of the operational software, managing worker nodes, and much, much more. Um, in addition to that, operation teams really need to ensure that their workloads are deployed in a secure manner um, and have confidence that they're deployed in a way that's going to reduce any exposure to any known security vulnerabilities. So this just further increases the operational overhead of running Kubernetes on your own. And to be honest, all, all this underlying infrastructure management effort <clears throat> doesn't necessarily move the business forward. Um, our customers really wanna focus on the applications and the ideas that will allow them to deliver things like new products to their end users, not really Kubernetes cluster infrastructure operations. Our customers choose Amazon EKS because, it, like I was mentioning, really allows them to focus on their business applications and offload that undifferentiated heavy, heavy lifting, those tactical operations associated when you self-manage infrastructure. Um, it allows them to offload those operations that really don't add direct business value. Um, so Amazon EKS makes it easy to run Kubernetes without having to validate, build, or operate Kubernetes on your own. Uh, the day-to-day -day operations of running Kubernetes can really be reduced when using EKS. So this is things like scaling the control plane or worker nodes, updating Kubernetes versions, security, authentication, backups, and, and many other things. So by removing these responsibilities from your operations teams, you really free them up to focus on the things that drive value and generally move the business forward. EKS really provides the flexibility of Kubernetes with the security and resiliency of being an AWS managed service. So as customers continue to move a larger portion of their workloads to Kubernetes, um, Amazon is meeting our customers' demands with our Amazon EKS offering. So let's talk about uh, a couple of the key attributes of EKS that really um, have driven our customers to really appreciate the EKS service. So first off, we do not modify open source Kubernetes. Uh, EKS is fully upstream certified and conformant Kubernetes. We actually even backport security fixes that we um, provide for the EKS service um, back to the open source offering to ensure we remain consistent with the open source community. We support the upstream versions of Kubernetes for a longer period of time. Um, currently, we support four versions of Kubernetes with EKS, um, which gives our customers pretty sufficient time to roll out any upgrades as they become available. Um, extending that kind of life cycle for upgrades is generally valuable for many of our customers as Kubernetes releases come out pretty quickly. Um, so giving them that additional time with our support for multiple versions allows them to kind of pace themselves as these new version updates become available. 
And as part of that support cycle for the different versions of Kubernetes, we backport patches, fixes, any upgrades that we provide to the different versions of Kubernetes we support. And that may even be ones that the community itself is not currently supporting. Um, we do provide that managed Kubernetes experience where we do a lot of the work to select the right version of Kubernetes, validate the dependencies, provide the security, stability, the operational experience that our customers really rely and expect AWS to deliver. Um, one of the things that, that makes us different is we really want to reduce the complexity of Kubernetes operations in general. Um, it is generally our goal to make, with a lot of AWS services, is to make the ongoing administration and management of your Kubernetes clusters pretty simple and boring, something that you really don't have to uh, get concerned about. Um, th that's generally our goal when we look at the EKS service, how to make it more accessible to more users, make it easier for more people to leverage the value of the Kubernetes platform. And of course, we do recognize that you're probably not starting from scratch when you decide to build with Amazon EKS. Um, you may already have chosen a set of tooling around Kubernetes, whether that's within your existing on-premises environment or uh, an existing cloud environment. Um, but with EKS, you definitely have the ability to bring any of the tools, the solutions, the applications that you're familiar with while leveraging the scale and the ease of an AWS managed service. So let's take a quick look at the overall EKS architecture. Um, so as we kind of discussed before, EKS is going to manage the Kubernetes control plane components on your behalf in an AWS managed account in VPC. And then we're going to expose the Kubernetes API, um, that Kubernetes API endpoint for configura configuration operations via something like kubectl. Um, from there, most of the infrastructure components of the Kubernetes control plane is going to be extracted for you outside of that endpoint. Um, but the worker nodes are going to then be provisioned in a account that you own within your customer VPC. And those worker nodes are going to connect back to the EKS control plane via the API endpoint. Now, there are a couple of different options for provisioning those worker nodes, and we'll discuss those options um, in a couple of slides. But let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into what that managed EKS control plane looks like behind the scenes. So Amazon EKS is going to provide you a scalable and highly available Kubernetes control plane that runs across multiple AWS availability zones within a region. Um, EKS is automatically going to manage the availability and the scalability of not only those Kubernetes API servers for the control plane, but also the etcd persistence layer for each cluster. Um, EKS runs the Kubernetes control plane, as I mentioned, across the three availability zones within a region in order to really ensure high availability of the control plane. And it's automatically going to detect and replace any unhealthy control plane nodes that are identified. The EKS control plane is built using native AWS services such as EC2 instances with auto scaling groups and network load balancers, um, which are all surrounded by additional AWS operational tooling. Um, any data stored within the etcd nodes and the different associated Amazon EBS volumes for the EC2 instances are all going to be encrypted using the AWS Key Management Service or KMS. And as I mentioned before, the control plane is run in a account managed by AWS and the Kubernetes API is then exposed via the EKS endpoint that's associated with your cluster. Um, but each cluster control plane is 100% single tenant and unique. They each are going to run on their own set of Amazon EC2 instances, and nothing's really going to be shared with any other customers that we have. So that's kind of the control plane. So let's look at the, the nodes to the Kubernetes where the containers are actually are running at. So while the EKS control plane is fully managed and its underlying infrastructure is really abstracted from you, the worker nodes are an area where you do have more choices around the types of compute environments that will work best for your use case. So EKS will let you run worker nodes as either Amazon EC2 instances that are provisioned within your customer VPC and accounts um, and or AWS Fargate containers. So for anyone that's not familiar with AWS Fargate, 
Uh, Fargate is an AWS service which provides seamless serverless sorry, compute for containers. Um, Fargate automatically provisions and scales compute for your containers based on the different parameters you define. And with Fargate, you only pay for the resources requested by your applications to run. Um, there's no underlying infrastructure for, in, infrastructure for you to manage or worry about. Um, and one of the great things about this is that this is not a one or the other decision. Um, you can actually run workloads on both EC2 instances and Fargate within a single EKS cluster. Um, so you get to make the right choice at the individual workload level on what makes sense for that application. When looking at the EC2 node type, you have two options for your node groups, um, depending on the level of management you want AWS to be responsible for. So you have the option of going kind of your own path and choosing self-managed node groups. Um, these are node groups where you manage the EC2 instances yourself and then kind of connect them back to the e EKS cluster control plane. Um, so this is going to th take on the responsibility of things like managing the auto scaling group for the EC2 instances, um, creating custom AMIs um, for your specific use cases, application patching and underlying OS updates. All that's going to be something that you kind of manage on your own with self-managed node groups. The other option we have is EKS managed node groups. So Amazon EKS managed node groups automate the provisioning um, and the lifecycle management of nodes, which are Amazon EC2 instances as well, for your EKS clusters. Um, these nodes will run using the latest Amazon EKS optimized EC2 AMIs or potentially even custom AMIs that you define for your specific use cases and this is all provisioned within your customer private VPC. Managed node groups will then manage the updates and any terminations required automatically and will gracefully drain nodes as the update process happens to ensure that your applications stay available during any update processes to new versions of the Kubernetes software. So overall, managed node groups they're really another way to just re remove more of that undifferentiated heavy lifting we talked about earlier of managing Kubernetes clusters. So you can focus on the other operational aspects that are really gonna bring higher value. So thinking about the other compute option now, um, AWS Fargate. So as I mentioned, Fargate is that serverless compute engine for containers. Um, it works with Amazon EKS, and it also works with our other container orchestration engine, um, Amazon Elastic Container Service ECS. Um, we're not going to focus on that one here today uh, as we're focused more on Kubernetes, but it is available for ECS as well. Um, Fargate makes it very easy for you to focus on building your applications. Um, it's going to remove any need for you to provision and manage underlying servers. Um, one of the great benefits is it lets you specify and pay for resources at a per application level, um, instead of having to provision a complete uh, set of infrastructure underlying it. And then it's gonna improve security through its isolation by design. So Fargate pods are completely isolated from other pods um, within your Kubernetes cluster and provide isolation from a CPU memory and storage standpoint by leveraging um, micro VMs, which are based on our open source firecracker virtualization technology. Um, so these micro VMs actually combine the security and isolation properties provided by a hardware virtualization technology like traditional VMs, but they do it with the speed and flexibility of containers. Um, so this is actually the same tech that underlies our AWS Lambda compute offering, our serverless compute, um, if you're familiar with that service that we have. So to use Fargate with EKS, it's pretty simple. Um, you associate a Fargate profile with your EKS cluster, um, and this tells EKS what pods to basically run on the Fargate service. So this is defined using um, Kubernetes namespaces and even optionally Kubernetes labels. Um, any pods that kind of match the selectors from within the Fargate profile are then scheduled to run on Fargate. Um, it will spin up those micro VMs, run the pod, attach them as a, a pseudo node within your EKS cluster, and then expose those into your VPC versus a VA network, Elastic Network interface. Um, so pretty easy to get going, make Kubernetes 
almost a completely uh, solution without any infrastructure management by leveraging our Fargate offering. One of the other benefits you get of Amazon EKS is that it really enables you to leverage the other AWS services we have um, directly from Kubernetes using native or um, community-driven integrations. So you have the option of store, storage integrations with our solutions like Amazon EBS, uh, EFS and FSx or shared file storage um, for any of your stateful-based workloads. You can use our native AWS security and authentication services um, along with our well-architected framework to ensure your cluster is going to be configured securely. Uh, EKS will automatically use AWS's different networking services um, to provision load balancers um, for your application to configure your VPC or to set up things like Route 53 DNS entries for any external access to your applications. And then on top of that, EKS is really going to be able to integrate with both AWS native and a lot of the third party tools out there provide multiple options for observability. Uh, things like our native CloudWatch Container Insights uh, feature of our, our CloudWatch monitoring solution. And then of course, open source tools like Prometheus, Grafana are, are available for usage with EKS as well. So today we have hundreds of thousands of customers using Amazon EKS, and I'm sure you are familiar with many of the names of our customers on this slide. Um, one of the great things about AWS is really the way that we truly listen to our customers, um, take their feedback to directly drive our product roadmaps. Um, so we've heard from tons of customers that they love our cloud-based version of EKS, um, but there's many of them that we heard from that continue to have requirements to run workloads on-premises um, in addition to the cloud. And we're really looking and leveraging Kubernetes as a way to provide the portability that is needed across these different environments. Um, so based on that important customer feedback, we made two announcements at reInvent last year that added two new deployment options to our Amazon EKS service. So the first thing we announced was Amazon EKS Distro. And with EKS Distro, we basically open sourced the Kubernetes version that AWS uses for Amazon EKS. So EKS Distro is the exact same version of Kubernetes that EKS offers, um, the same major minor patch versions. Um, pretty much it is the distribution of Kubernetes that powers EKS. So for the first time, we are basically releasing outside of EKS the result of all the work that AWS does to test, certify, and build open source Kubernetes versions when they're released. EKS Distro um, serves as the foundation, as you can see on the slide, of the AWS cloud-based um, EKS, as well as another new deployment option we announced called Amazon EKS Anywhere. So EKS Anywhere was designed to enable our customers to deploy Kubernetes workloads on their self-managed hardware and get API consistency with Amazon EKS in the cloud. Um, EKS Anywhere is gonna provide the tooling to automatically install, upgrade, and provide ongoing maintenance operations of EKS distro-based Kubernetes clusters in your environment. So let's dive into each one of these a little bit more and get into the details. So with EKS Distro, customers can now use our open source to build a Kubernetes anywhere they deploy Kubernetes today. Um, EKS Distro abstracts away the complexity involved with packaging and distributing a Kubernetes release. Um, it is the version of Kubernetes that powers Amazon EKS in the cloud and will power Amazon EKS anywhere as well, which is really gonna help provide version consistency across the different Amazon EKS deployment options. So when AWS certifies a Kubernetes release to be ready for EKS, there's a pretty significant effort that is put into that process. Um, so for instance, we have to go through and make sure the versions of uh, etcd, the API server, the controller manager, scheduler, all those different core Kubernetes components all work well together. Um, we also have to test and make sure it meets our operational excellence criteria, um, things like security, stability, and scalability are all very important for an AWS managed services 
with the, the level of expectations our customers come to rely on for us across those different factors. So EKS Distro is a reflection of all those best practices and learnings, and then taking that, bundling it, making it available for cons customers to consume from a single trusted source, AWS. So what we're including uh, in terms of EKS Distro is the same components that form the Kubernetes control plane. Um, that is, oh, sorry, and the data plane that is freely available when public Kubernetes releases occur. Um, it's all the same upstream open source components. This, this is not a fork. Um, and I've actually listed all these different components on the right side of the slide here to kind of show that there is a significant level of complexity involved in packaging and distributing a Kubernetes release. Um, Kubernetes is not a single binary. It is a set of related components that they, they all work together to form the larger Kubernetes platform. And some of these components, things like etcd and core DNS, they're actually completely separate open source projects and, and really need to be tested for version compatibility with each release. Um, another benefit of EKS Distro is that we actually backport fixes and security patches to all Kubernetes versions that are supported by Amazon EKS, which is potentially versions that are not supported by the Kubernetes community itself. Um, so that, that's another benefit you get by leveraging the Amazon EKS version of the Kubernetes distribution. And then EKS distro can be installed using tooling that you're familiar with today. Um, things like kubeadmin, kops, kind, and other open source tools out there. And then we do have a full ecosystem of partners with solutions built around deploying and enabling Kubernetes clusters based on the EKS distro. Um, Amazon EKS Anywhere, which is coming in 2021 this year, um, it enables you to easily create and operate Kubernetes clusters on-premise, um, building with that software, um, Amazon EKS Distro. So this is going to include building these Kubernetes clusters on your own virtual machines or bare metal servers within your environment. So EKS Anywhere is really going to save you the complexity of building and supporting your own tooling to manage Kubernetes clusters. It's going to provide automation tooling that simplifies the cluster creation process, um, administration, and operations on infrastructure as, such as bare metal, um, virtual machines within your environment, or even cloud-based virtual machines. It's going to provide some default configuration options, things for logging, monitoring, networking, um, storage, but then it's going to also bring opinionated tooling and additional components that we feel you need to run Kubernetes in a production-based environment. Things around cluster installation, lifecycle management, observability, backups, policy management, all these different components to ensure that you're able to run uh, a production-based Kubernetes cluster in your own uh, environment, whether that's virtual machines or bare metal. So I talked quite a bit about kind of operational consistency, version consistency across different environments. So what does that really look like with EKS in the cloud and EKS anywhere? Um, so starting at the bottom, there's going to be a little divergence there. So the infrastructure where you actually deploy into is going to be a little different. So EKS in the cloud, as we talked about, it's going to support deployment on EC2 instances with self-managed node groups or managed node groups. Then we'll have the serverless compute option Fargate as well for deployment. And then on premise, you'll be able to deploy into VM based environments or bare metal. Um, as you can see in the middle there, EKS distro is really going to be that common Kubernetes version that provides version consistency across EKS in the cloud and EKS anywhere within your on premises environment. And then the Amazon EKS console is going to provide that layer of visibility into clusters deployed across both these environments, giving you kind of that single pane view across all your different Kubernetes clusters, no matter where they reside. Um, and then on top of that, customers will be able to use similar sets of tools for on-prem and in region for, some, for that operational consistency that you really need when running EKS in these different environments. And then as things continue to develop and evolve, we'll have more and more tooling in areas like observability, uh, deployment, security. They're all going to be in alignment with the options that are available for EKS in the cloud with EKS anywhere. 
So now from EKS in AWS to uh, EKS on AWS outposts or local zones for those latency sensitive deployments, and now deployments on customer self-managed compute with EKS Anywhere and EKS Distro, um, these two new options really expand the existing EKS deployment option to make EKS available anywhere you need to deploy Kubernetes. Um, you have uh, lots of different options here depending on your use case, latency requirements, and the type of managed experience you want from EKS. This slide's kind of another view of the previous slide, um, kind of showing the different deployment options for EKS and where the responsibility lies for the different components of the solution. Um, so we have fully really managed options in the AWS cloud um, with EKS using Fargate or even managed node groups to completely customer supported managed, uh, customer managed options using EKS distro there, where the customer kind of takes the EKS Kubernetes distribution, um, completely manages it themselves, and then supports even comes from the community since it's open source there. Um, so there, there's a wide plane here for all your different use cases, whether it's on-premises, in cloud, um, we really have all the different options with EKS to meet your different needs. Another thing I want to mention about uh, EKS and Kubernetes containers in general um, on the AWS cloud is that when leveraging AWS, you really get access to the broadest set of services, technologies, and tools you need to build your containers-based applications. Um, so this is going to include things such as Amazon ECR, Elastic Container Registry, which is our fully managed container repository. Um, to our fully managed monitoring offerings with our Amazon CloudWatch, AWS native um, monitoring solution. And then we even have fully managed offerings around open source tools like our Amazon managed service for Grafana and Amazon managed service for Prometheus. Um, lots of different options there. Um, the last one I'll, I'll kind of touch on quickly is AWS App Mesh, um, which is our fully managed service mesh offering. That's gonna make it really easy for you to get visibility, um, enhanced security, and control over any of the communications, um, the network communications that are happening between your different container-based workloads and microservices. And then I definitely can't uh, wrap up without mentioning our partner ecosystem. Um, the AWS partner ecosystem for containers is very rich and broad and really can help augment any AWS capabilities and provide you with a choice for different operational software you need for your containerized workloads. Um, looking at the logos here, many of uh, the different presentations today were by some of these partners. So we got a, a pretty broad offering here with the different partners that help support our AWS solutions. Um, a lot of these partner products are allow you to take advantage of not only the AWS services themselves and extend the features and functionalities of there um, across things like DevOps, CICD, monitoring and logging, security and networking, lots of different options that you need for your container workloads. Um, so with the, with the support from our partner ecosystem um, and AWS's native services, we can definitely help you successfully deploy any container applications you need for your business use cases. And with that, I just want to say thank you to Ron and everybody for um, letting me spend some time with you today. Uh, hopefully this session um, gave you some good insight into the benefits of Amazon EKS in general and, and what it can provide to you no matter really where your containerized workloads exist today and where they're designed to run in the future.